flaunt your authenticity. Please forgive me as much as you may appreciate my talks. I do admit I might not be the best at coming up with creative titles, but <laughs> it doesn't speak for itself. And let's just be honest. Through our daily lives, we are constantly being told to be professional. Constantly. Be professional is what we're being told. What is professional, though? This is what I ask myself whenever I'm constantly being reminded to, to be professional. Is professional is, 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 is simply just surface. I always thought it was fake. Like, oh, uh, I, I, I can't be professional. I, I'm real. I'm real. No, it's surface. That's all it is. But when I think about flaunting my authenticity, how do I do both? How do I walk that line? Well, first of all, to be authentic is to be the real article that you are, the original copy, the original idea, the original blueprint that the universe created you from. Well, I know that I'm a UDSJ, so we already know what our authentic selves are. To be authentic is to be love in the flesh, period. Anything else is some secondary thoughts. When we look at a newborn, the newborn does not decide, oh, well, you're this color or you're this kind of person, or so I'm not going to love you. The newborn loves every single person that it sees. It isn't until we adults start to download our stuff into this beautiful child that the child learns a different way of thinking. But our original blueprint is to love in the flesh. When I ask myself, am I being authentic? The first question that comes to me is, am I being loving? See, we can be professional and still be authentic at the same time. To be you is to be a healing presence. I'm always thinking about the earth, always thinking about the world and how we can make this a world that works for everyone. And you know, just excuse me, but it's the Berkeley in me. I'm very much a hippie to my bone. What I've realized is the only thing that's mine to do is to be my authentic self. That is our only assignment. You are love. All we need you to do is to continue to be love in the flesh. That is authentic. Now, here's where it gets interesting, right? Because God is abundant. Therefore, God is expressed abundantly through many different characters and many different personalities and many different and many different and many different because God is just that abundant. So when these personalities clash and things get real creative, I won't speak for you, but it's very easy for me to see that it can be challenging sometimes to express love. Now, at first I thought that when I find this difficulty in my life to express love through, through different personalities and situations and what have you, that there was something wrong with me that I wasn't being authentic. No, 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 see? We do get angry. We are emotional beings. We get angry, we get frightened, we get jealous. Don't lie, so do you. We have all of those things. Does this mean I'm not being authentic? No, it does not. The difference is, am I being conscious of it? Now, I am an American man. The one thing that I think 
most of the world thinks when we hear that is showing emotions is something I am not allowed to do. I, I, I've learned over time, this is the stigma about being an American man. We're just not allowed to show emotions, except for anger. I, I can be angry or, or, or happy. When it's time to show tears, though, I'm supposed to break something. I'm being Neanderthal. Then we wonder why so many of us American men are passing a lot quicker than other men around the world. We are emotional beings. Part of expressing that love is also loving ourselves enough to be honest with ourselves and say, I am sad right now. I feel like crying. I am afraid. I don't have the answers and I want to find them from someone. But like many of us American men, I too fell into the stigma of the environment around me. I'm not even saying my parents gave it to me. I'm just saying that the environment around me gave me this idea that I'm supposed to suppress that and stuff it and keep it hidden. It wasn't until I became a parent where I realized how important it is for me to not only be in touch with my authentic self, but for me to express it, especially for my children's sake. I don't want my boys to grow up not knowing how to express themselves. I don't want them growing up feeling like they need to use their fists as a way to express. I don't want that. So that means I get to be courageous enough to show even my sons my authentic self. Um, an old proverb or old saying or whatever it is that I've heard many times in my life is that a truth sayer has no friends. <laughs> then I think about all the truth sayers I admire. You know, Jesus told the truth a lot. So Journal Truth told the truth, Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, so many of these people told the truth and they often found themselves at times they're very, very alone and often offending people to the point to where people wanted to harm them. We live in a world where we like to hide behind our titles our cars, our, our toys. And I say we because even as I speak right now, I'm laughing knowing that uh, <laughs> my friends know me for my Ralph Lauren habit that I have. A story about that. I grew up in South Berkeley, California until about age 13. And then we moved to East Oakland, California. And when I moved to East Oakland, California, I was going to a school by the name of Skyline High School. Now, for those who are aware of Skyline in the 90s, this was the one public school <laughs> that got approval from all the rich Oakland Hills parents. So if you were an Oakland Hills kid and you didn't want to go to a private school, you wanted to be cool and go to public school with us, you went to Skyline. What made Skyline unique was you had these really cool kids from the flatlands of East Oakland going to school with these rich kids from the hills of Oakland. So this beautiful mesh of just hood kids who knew how to wear a cricket sweater the proper way and, and, and spoiled kids who knew how to roll dice. It was just this beautiful collage. I can't explain it. I learned how to dress going to Skyline High. My first year was who's the weird hippie kid with the tie-dye shirt on. And it got to me. You see, I was a teenager and I wanted to fit in. I wanted to have a girlfriend. I wanted people to remember my, my name. I wanted all these things. So finally I got tired of people making fun of my tie-dye shirt and my ripped jeans and my hacky sack that I carried with me everywhere. <laughs> I said, look, dad, can, what do I have to do to get a pair of Jordans? What do I have to do to get a, uh, a Tommy Hilfiger jacket? 
And my father just said, well, listen, son, if you want that, as long as you keep your grades up, I'll let you have an after-school job and you, you can get that stuff yourself. And I said, okay. So I became a grocery bagger. That was my after-school job. And as soon as I got my first check, <laughs> I bought a pair of Jordan 11s, the patent leather ones, and a Tommy Hill, and a Tommy Hill figure sale coat. And just like that, the very next day at school, it was who's the new kid. <laughs> I got addicted to that feeling. Got addicted to the oh, I like how you did that. Oh, I like how you know, oh, that's fly. I got very addicted to that. To the point to where I literally felt like I was nobody without my de designer outfits. Almost felt like I was a, I, I could not relate to anybody, could not be awesome without it. Now, does me appreciating fashion make me any less authentic? No, it does not. However, when I feel like I am less than without it, well, that's a different thought. And that's what it turned into. We have the things we like. We enjoy them. We spend money on them. And others may try to define us from the things that we've learned to like. But let us make no mistake. The things you like, the things you appreciate, the things you do to express yourself, you are authentic without it, just like you are authentic with it. We always come back to the number one question. Am I being love? Am I being a loving presence? That is the real question. Sly Stone, Sly and the Family Stone. I'm sure some of you remember that group. They tore it up at Woodstock. I saw that I wasn't there, of course, wasn't even thought of, but I did see the footage. Tore it up at Woodstock. They have this beautiful song called Everybody is a Star. And Sly, with his beautiful voice, said, I love you for who you are, not for who you feel you need to be. Who do we feel we need to be sometimes? See, right here, I'm amongst family. I'm amongst my spiritual community. I know I can cry right now. I can talk about what I'm afraid of. I don't have to worry about being authentic here. This is a safe place for me to do that. But when I'm not in front of these beautiful faces, who do I feel I need to be? Sometimes I'm Brother Lucian, the tough guy. Yes, I know we all know I'm not one, but the rest of the world doesn't know that. So I pretend I am sometimes. Sometimes I'm... Brother Lucian, the player. No, I'm not good at it, but sometimes I need to think I'm one so I can leave the house feeling confident. There are so many monikers. Oh, Brother Lucian, the intelligent guy who is always quoting Malcolm X and all, all these amazing. I can go on and on and on about these different characters, but at the end of the day, all of them are dedicated to being a loving presence. Okay, let me not say that. There is the part where my ego gets caught up. But let's remember what the ego is. The ego is that part of us that wants to stay safe and comfortable. There's a place for the ego, but remember, the ego is always trying to keep us safe and comfortable. When the soul is expanding and going to places that the ego is afraid of going, the ego always gets to run in its mouth. The ego has its place. I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't, but let's understand that today we're talking about being authentic, which means the ego gets to put itself where it needs to be and enjoy the show. Now, I'm a metaphysician just like y'all. And because I'm a metaphysician just like y'all, we know that every metaphysician used so many metaphors from that movie, The Matrix, 
that we pretty much had to wait a good decade before people like me got to start using them because I wasn't old enough to get in the pulpit at that time. So I saw the movie The Matrix, couldn't wait till one day, oh man, if I ever get to speak at the pulpit, I'm going to talk about every single minister I admired had beaten that movie like a dead horse. But since that movie's old now, I get to keep on bringing it up. A quote from that movie changed my life. Of course, we all know it. Neo walks into this regular looking apartment with all these interesting looking kids. And then we see one kid who seems to be bending spoons with his mind. Remember that? And finally, Spoon Boy looks at Neo. We also know Neo is one spelled sideways. He looks at Neo and he tells him, I had to write it down. Usually I don't look at my notes, but I, I brought notes today. Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. Here we go. Here's the fun part. Neo, the handsome Keanu Reeves says, what truth? And that's what Spoonboy tells him, that there is no spoon. Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends. It is only yourself. You hear what I'm saying? To be your authentic self is to literally be one with the universe. It is literally remembering there is no you and God. There is only God. So therefore, everything we see, everything we come across is only an extension of ourselves. You want to spin the boom, you spin your, you be you bend yourself. That is how you bend the spoon. So constantly, when we come up to these obstacles, these bridges, these opportunities for growth, we're being asked to bend. This is how we walk on water. This is how we turn any situation into wine. This is how we do all of that by literally realizing there is no separation between I and the so-called situation. There is only God. Now, I'm talking a good game right now. And I'm looking like one of those real, you know, fired up Southern preachers because it's hot over here in Sacramento and I'm sweating. It's all in effect. I did that on purpose. But let's understand that while I'm fired up like this, there will be challenges. Now, the optimist in me is supposed to say there are no challenges. There are only opportunities. No, 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 no. It's a challenge for me because my ego has a big mouth. There will be challenges. I'd like to assume that most of us appreciate real people more than fake people, especially when it comes to picking our friends. I, there's, a, there, there's a saying I've heard for the longest, which is, I'll take real hate over fake love any day. <laughs> but we are what we attract, aren't we? And this is where forgiveness comes in too. Because just like we have been betrayed and heartbroken by those who showed us that they were not as authentic as we thought they were, we've also been on the other end too. Where someone saw that maybe we weren't being as authentic as we could have been. And since every experience we have in life is about our own consciousness, my question is always, what is mine to do? What is my work? This is why we forgive. Because to hold on to something, to hold grudges, keeps us at that moment. And we can only create miracles in the present moment. That's why they call a gift a present. Because you have to be fully present to accept the gift. We can only make miracles in this moment. 
So while we're tripping on the the old, the, the oh my goodness, I can't believe I told that joke at that time and that was so inappropriate. Now I'm embarrassed or oh I can't believe I got really mad and snapped at that person like that and said those awful things or oh back in the eighth grade I stole a candy bar and whatever it is we are holding on to. We can't be fully authentic while we're holding on to the past or thinking about the future. When we are fully immersed in this glorious, beautiful, joyous God moment right now, right literally now, that's when we're being authentic. You cannot get more authentic than this moment right now, but we have to be present to, to, to experience it. That's what's so beautiful about it. I used to think that I was supposed to dwell on my mistakes and, and let them beat me up and I had to punish myself. I used to really think that. Till I've come across so many people in this philosophy called New Thought who, who just literally, as soon as they make a mistake, just, oh, okay, and move on. No matter how big drives me nuts, you, you can do that? You can literally just forgive yourself and keep moving? Yes. You don't have to punish yourself. You don't have to hold on to that. You do not have to bear that. Right in this very moment, you can decide that you are the beautiful, loving presence of God that you were here to meant to be. It does not matter what you have done in the past. It's over anyway, which means it doesn't even exist anymore. It's gone. This is why they call a present a present, because you must be present to accept it. Using the universe or, which is just the same thing as Christ consciousness, requires us to be fully present and authentic. This is how we bend spoons with our mind. This is, this is how we do all those things. I mean, we all have moments. I know we do. I know we can all go back in our, in our lives and remember moments where a, mi a miracle was literally manifested from our own consciousness, just spoken into existence. That wasn't no accident. In that moment, you were aware that you were fully aligned. You're always fully aligned, always. You can never not be fully aligned. But what we can do is forget that we are fully aligned. There's no thing you can do that can ever diminish your connection to the source nothing but we can't forget now this is why we meditate this is why we get quiet this is why we affirm these are practices that constantly remind us of our connection the universe is busy doesn't mean it's bad doesn't mean it's a you know the chaos doesn't necessarily mean that it's negative just means it's busy. A freeway is busy. It's dangerous. It's, you can get hit. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's a freeway. The universe is the same way. Blessings and consciousness just moving at speed. Just near, near. If you get hit, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. An analogy that, you know, even I don't really get that much, but I'm learning because I watch my son play games. And, you know, there's these games where, there's a lot going on, you know, these video games. One of these games he likes to play is this war game. And like you enter a, a zone that's already going on. And there's tanks and bombs and just all this stuff going on. And literally you just manifest somewhere on the, as soon as you decide to play. But there's already all this chaos going on as soon as your creative player manifests into the game. So oftentimes, which is funny, I watch my son do it. He'll press play, and as soon as he emerges in the game, something lands on him, and he has to start all over again, literally as soon as he plays. That happens to us all the time in life. You were just minding your business. You were just doing what you were supposed to, and something landed on you. You don't have to beat yourself up about it. You don't have to wonder what happened. You don't have to wonder what you did to deserve it. The universe is always doing what the universe does. You can forgive yourself right now. You can just get over it. Now, yes, sometimes there are divine interventions that occur. 
We get to laugh at those. But as far as the universe just doing what it does, let yourself off the hook. Holding on to that which no longer serves us diminishes our authenticity. When you truly know that the presence of God is no different from the presence of you, when you truly are aware that it is the exact same thing, there is no need to hold on to things. Everything I come across is God. That's why I love the Buddhist saying, uh, love everything, cling to nothing. I'm sure I butchered that, but I, I did my best. There's no need to cling to anything. Because everything that I come across is God. The people who truly know this, who truly practice this, are the ones I'm seeing just literally, just always, just money falls on them and concert tickets and, and oh, they're meeting the most awesome partners and luck is consciousness. Can we not remember that? Luck isn't just something that lands on certain people. Certain people just decide, I am lucky. And therefore the universe says, yes, you are. We can be lucky together right now. We can all make that decision before this is over. Am I being authentic? When I feel like crying, am I allowing myself to cry? When there's something I'm afraid of in my life, am I talking about it? Or am I putting my ego forward instead? Remember that who we present to the world is who we attract. So when I'm putting forward this tough guy persona, this cold as ice persona, this yeah, better not nobody mess with me persona, and then I wonder why I'm surrounded by friends who have a <laughs> ice cold personality and never really have the reaction I'd like them to have when I'm in a vulnerable place, I get to check myself on that. See, I wanna feel safe to be vulnerable. And in order for me to do that, I first have to allow others to be vulnerable with me, but also I have to have the courage and the faith to know that if I allow myself to be vulnerable, the support that I'm looking for is out there for me. That's what's also amazing about this thing called Christ consciousness, about using the power of the universe. You can't ask for anything for someone else that you wouldn't want for yourself. It's like the little safety device that God put on there for us, see? That's how come I don't have to worry about anybody cursing me because you can't curse me without cursing yourself. And guess what? A curse is only a curse if I accept it. You can't just say I'm cursing you and I'll be like, oh, wow, that, that's really terrible. No, I have to accept the curse. That's the rules. If I say I cursed you and then you have a bad day because you accepted me cursing you, well, that's your fault. You can just laugh in my face and be like, oh, really? And have a great day. The way we use the universe, remember that the universe is pure love. So therefore, I can never ask for anything of the universe for someone else that I wouldn't want for myself. Now, in CSL, I was told we're supposed to ask permission to pray for somebody. I will tell y'all and nobody else, I don't practice that. If I love you and I see you going through something, I'm not asking your permission to pray for you. I'm just going to pray for you because I know how the universe works. Because whatever I ask for you, I'm also asking for myself. So I'm still in alignment. It's still an integrity. And I know that at the end of the day, what we all want is love and peace. So if I'm asking that for you, I am in alignment. Sorry, if you are on my mind and on my heart, I don't even got to know your name. I can just pass you and say, oh, spirit, I am praying right now for the person in the, in the, in, in the red sweater. I said, spirit knows what I'm talking about. Please, spirit didn't pick your name anyway. I don't think God would have named me Lucian. I'm just saying. I think I would have got a cooler name. This is how we use consciousness. 
the number one rule is that the universe is raw, pure, uncut love, which is why it only knows one word. Nothing spoils you like the universe. The answer is always yes with the universe. Yes, every prayer you have ever spoken has been answered. However, it is answered depending on how your consciousness around what you're is asking for is. Yes, you do have a million dollars. You have a billion dollars. You have a trillion dollars right now with your name on it. However, your consciousness of you deserving and knowing that that trillion dollars is in your possession right now is how you actually see the physical manifestation. But trust me, the answer is already there. Thank you so much for making me a member of your community. Thank you for allowing me to be a family member. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so, so humbled and honored to be a part of this community. And I love you dearly. Namaste. Standing here in your presence in a grace so relentless I am one by per Perfect love wrapped within the arms of heaven in a peace that lasts forever, sinking deep in mercy. See, I'm wide awake, drawing close, stood by grace, and all my heart is yours. Of fear move. I breathe you in, I lean into your love. Oh, your love. Love so deep. It washes over me. Your grace is all I seek. I give my everything. Love so deep. It washes over me. Your grace is all I seek. I give my everything. Love so deep. It washes over me. Your is all I seek, I give my everything, my everything, love. I give my everything, I give my everything, I give my everything, love.